Hey KU fans, welcome back to KU Sports Extra. We're starting to get this down, Tom. The, the, the episodes are flying by. It's, it's overlap season. Basketball is happening. Football is happening. But we're not rattled at all. I'm impressed. Yeah, the worst possible time for my clothing deal to fall through and not have a jacket here. Turn out the whole deal was done. They were going to sponsor my wardrobe. And then they missed the obvious. They don't have plus size jackets. Puma was the Gone. sponsor, right? Puma. Well, we're not going to give them any pub, whoever it was. <laughs> We're yeah. not going to say, so I'm available for a wardrobe sure, sponsorship. Sure. Yeah, Weavers, call him up. Uh, Nike, if you want to make dress jackets for a guy like this, call him up. There's options out there. Anyway, Tom Keegan, Matt Tate, we're going to talk KU hoops. We're going to talk KU football. It's been an exciting week. Maybe not for the reason KU fans had hoped, but still exciting. A lot of, a lot of stuff happening out there. The good news this week starts with football, I think, and, and it's that there's some excitement back around the program. People were really fired up about that effort that KU put out there against TCU, a game they probably should have won, just a couple of mistakes, and they go, they go the wrong way. If they don't make those, they might have won that game. TCU, give them credit for fighting, but what a cool thing to see the stadium actually fill up instead of emptying. Unbelievable. Yeah. You know, I mean, we've seen, how many times have we seen under Turner Gill and Charlie Weiss, just everyone leave at halftime? Yeah. This time, they're hearing on the radio or watching on TV. Wait a minute. Right. This could be one of the biggest upsets in college football in recent memory. I want to be there to watch it. Right. And so it didn't happen, but man, did they play great. Man, have they played great under Clint Bowen. Five and one against the spread. Adam Silver, the NBA commissioner, has made it okay to talk about the spread. Vegas adjusts to spreads when they see a team play, but they still don't believe they it. They figured it out, right? That's how well this team has responded to Clint Bone as the head coach, and kudos to Shane Zenger, who could have made an easy choice like like Dave Campo, and, and Campo would have been a great face of the program and done a good job. And, well, he but had then, head coaching experience. Too. And he had head coaching experience, but there would have been no clamoring for Dave Campo to get the job at this stage of his career. Right. So Shane Zenger knew that, and giving the job to, to Clint Bone, he gave it to him because of the way the team – response to him, how energetically the defense played. Great for him to do that. And, you know, the danger in doing that was you paint yourself in the corner if it's obvious that the team is responding to him. Because yeah. now, I mean, he goes with someone else. He alienates every former letterman. He alienates half the fan base. Half the team. That took courage to do that. Because, look, now if he were to hire someone else... Man, can you imagine the backlash? Right. I mean, all these players that are coming back, all the players that are graduating, too, they, they want Bowen to be the guy. To a man. There's not two guys on that roster that don't want that to be the case. There's signs starting to pop up all over town. We want Clint. Big banners like this one that are professionally made. I mean, this, this thing's really, really... Yeah, Six Mile Tavern. ...taking on some, some flood form. I mean, it's, it's really overwhelming this town, and it's cool to see uh, Clint Bowen deserves the support. That's good news, but nothing to me tells you more than you need to know than watching the stadium fill up instead of empty for a change. That was wild. Yeah, and when Clint Bowen was working under Mark Mangino, we saw what that stadium could be like when full. it's completely yeah. full. Wild, wild. And, and Mangino did it by building with a, recruiting two stars and three stars and turning them into four stars. Yeah. He did it the gradual way, the real way. Not the glitzy way, and he didn't have any name when he came here. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's the thing. So a lot of good news around KU football for a change, which has really been pretty cool to see. There is some bad news, though. Yeah, that came where I, I, I witnessed it. Yeah. <laughs> 72 to 40. Man, and Kentucky's big men just dominated KU's big men. And the good news is of the bad news yeah, is that so they'll sad. never be – a team as big as this that Kansas will face maybe ever again in the history of college basketball, right. unless people are eight feet in a year or two or now because fathers uh, start gene doping so that they're, they can get some giants' genes and pass them on to their kids so that they can be the star of the local high school Happens and then go around. They can go around, hey, science is death kind of stuff is right around the corner. Yeah. 
And then they go around the local bars bragging, that's my boy, that's my boy. And as soon as they leave, everyone just rolls their eyes and says, what a braggart. How about the nicknames that kid could have, you know? Didn't stretch. <laughs> I think right there, Stretch would be the best nickname for an eight-foot high school that's player. That's not bad. I was thinking more along the lines of, like, genetically driven nicknames, you know, but we'll, well leave that alone. Stretch. stretch. When you got good. perfection, why yeah, mess with right. it? right. But anyway, the bad news is there are other tall teams that are going to make Kansas look short. Yeah. And Texas is one of them. Maybe they're not that tall, but they're big. And not nearly as big as Kentucky. But the bad news is Kansas right now, unless they significantly improve their defensive abilities, is going to look small against other opponents. Sure, yeah. They're obviously going to get a lot better than they showed the other night. But they definitely have some work to do. That wasn't just a product of size eating them up. They didn't play well either. No. And Bill Self's very aware of that. He tells us what he was hoping after the game and lost in translation, and then Tom Keegan will translate it for you. I was hoping that was vodka. But no. <laughs> <laughs> translation, I'd just like to, to drink this one away and hope everybody does the same and just puts it in the past, although I will use it in practice. Every time I see less than perfect effort, I will say, Two words, three words, 72 to 40. Yeah, I think the other part of that translation shows you how smart Bill Self is. He comes into the press conference after one of the worst games, the worst game statistically of his KU career, and he could be moping and miserable and down and not wanting to be there, and he cracks a joke, and that's what everybody's talking about the next day. It's making national headlines, the vodka line. It was a yeah. brilliant, brilliant move, and uh, he knew exactly what he was doing. Well, I'll say this. He's a more gracious loser than John Calipari was a gracious winner. That's always a fair point. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, let's talk about the football game this week. KU at Oklahoma, number 23 Oklahoma, jumped back into the polls this week after missing out on the top 25 last week, but they beat Texas Tech over the weekend. KU goes down there to play. It's an 11 a.m. kickoff. We haven't seen many of those this year. It's kind of weird. I was talking to some Oklahoma beat writers, and they said almost every OU game this year has been at 11. That's the KU treatment. It was a little surprising to hear that, but yeah. it's all about TV, and they've matched those up the way they needed to. So anyway, this game, all of a sudden, after the TCU effort, could be really interesting. It, it, KU's going to definitely go down there believing they have a chance, and I think it all starts with their physical play. I mean, OU's offensive and defensive lines are so big and so strong. Texas Tech had them reeling a little bit last week, and then in the second half, OU just handed the ball off handed the ball off, handed the ball off, and plowed ahead. So it's really going to be important for KU's D-line, Stowers, Tadarian Johnson, and then, of course, Heaney and Love and those guys supporting them to, to be up for the task of stopping this run and making OU freshman, redshirt freshman quarterback, Cody Thomas, who's getting the start in place of Trevor Knight, make him beat you. That, that's what you want to do. I mean, this is a guy that hasn't played a lot of football, and these KU defensive players Make kinda, him throw. Yeah, exactly. You get in uh, down and distance situations where he's got to throw, and then, you know, that's KU secondary is pretty good, or at least the cornerback. Sure. I mean, yeah, why not put those guys in position to win the game for you instead of opening up vulnerabilities? So, tough place to play, though. It is. It is. There's, you know, there's, there's something about it. This matchup makes you feel like if you're just looking at it on paper, yeah, KU probably does have a chance to go down there and compete and play well and hang in there. But then you think about it, and it's – well, KU at Norman, that just doesn't go well very often. So No, it doesn't, although the burgers at the garage, if it's, I hope we can I've find heard, time to stop I've by heard and get them. I'm fired up about that, yeah. yeah. I've, I've heard Nick Krug is uh, our travel cuisine expert, I think is the way to put that, and uh, he always keeps tabs on those things. So he's already two, three days ahead of you on that one. I think he's ready Good, to go. we're all set then. But let's talk about the game. Prediction time. Who do you have? KU, Oklahoma, 11 a.m. Saturday. Who wins? Uh, Oklahoma, 38-21. to 21. I think, obviously, KU's offense is improving under Michael Cummings uh, and Eric Keesaw and Tony Pearson back at running back. Right. But up front, that's a tough, tough matchup for Kansas going against these Sooners. Yeah, I agree. It's wild. We've been really close on our predictions lately, um, and we couldn't be any closer this week. I've got Oklahoma 37, KU 21. Oh, jeez. I see a few field goals. I think they might have the ball a lot. They might ground it out pound on the ground, and, and but then KU will toughen up and force a few field goals. Uh, that's how I got to 37 instead of 38, but I, I do think that would be a pretty good showing. I mean, nobody expected a four-point game against TCU, and that was way better than people thought it could be. This one, 
if you lose 38 21 37 21 i don't think anybody's down on clint bowen after that i think you'd beat the spread wouldn't you i think you would it's four touchdowns so let's talk about who might help ku beat the spread who's your prime time pick this week my prime time pick is ben heaney as you mentioned oklahoma's going to be running a lot and ben heaney will be in there doing his darndest to keep them from running for first downs and touchdowns the guy is an incredible athlete just so fast sideline to sideline and hard nose so ben heaney's my prime time pick i've got a great heaney story after last week's game he came in encouraged by the effort disappointed in the loss of course but but those guys were encouraged about how hard they fought against tcu um, and how they were relevant in the national playoff picture again that was pretty wild so he sits down and he's got the stat sheet with him and he's looking for his numbers because that's what good players do. They want to see how they did. They know good they and bad well. players well, do that's it. that's true. Good point. And the way it prints down there at the football complex, there's always a line toward the bottom that's just kind of messed up. It's, it's blacked out a little bit. It's off center somehow and you can't really read it. So Heaney's name nowhere to be found on the defensive leaders, the tackles. It's uh, Courtney Arnick's up there. I forget. Jake Love might have been up there also. But there's a little glitch, a little, you know, black mark that kind of looks like that. And Heaney looks at me and says, what's up? Is that me? And it was. And he led <laughs> the team in tackles again. And he had double figure tackles again. I think it was so, 11. Yeah. So good pick always. Uh, no surprise there. The guy's locked in even when he's just looking at the stat sheet. So uh, my prime time pick this week is Nick Harwell. There's been so much made about Nigel King and rightfully so. The guy's been amazing. And Jemay Muntine, right. and rightfully so. The yeah. guy's been amazing. There you go. Those guys, I heard that somewhere. Uh, <laughs> those guys have both really, really helped Michael Cummings and helped this offense. I think it's Nick Harwell's time to do that. I think he could have close to double-digit catches. Double-digit catches is harder to say than it sounds. but It's very hard to say. Dig, dig jit. Double-dig jit. I, I don't know how you say it. I, I'm not going to try again. There's no way. Double figures in catches this week, receptions. Ten or more. Yeah, but but he's going to have a big game, and, and it's getting to be that crunch time for a guy like that. The NFL's on his radar. Tons of scouts were in this week to watch practice, and I, I noticed they were really watching Nick Harwell. So I think that he's got the realization that he's got two games left to really put his best foot forward and say, hey, here's what I can do. Do you want to pick me up or not? So Nick Harwell, big game this week, and I think KU hangs in there. Obviously, you do as well. Let's finish this thing off with obnoxious people. Ooh. Who's yours? A uh, very sad one. Floyd Mayweather Jr. Uh, USA Today had a story with, uh, you know, the the battered women in his past. Yeah. Uh, awful. But then they also included from his d documentary, uh, him quoting, uh, saying that comparing women to cars that he possesses. If you can afford to maintain 10 cars, well, if you can afford to maintain 20 women, you should be able to do it, is what he said. And, you know, uh, just a really, that story really, really captured his mental illness and how desperately this man needs help. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it just shows you, great athlete, wealthy guy, all this stuff doesn't mean he's a smart guy no, mean he's, he's obnoxious yeah that's that's a really awful story and, and for that matter I mean Bill Cosby's got a little bit of a athlete tie he's he's been athletically linked in the past that story's awful too I mean that's that's some really bad stuff coming out there something you never thought you'd hear but I'm gonna make it a little lighter with mine and it's still very obnoxious but Robert Griffin the third and Jay Gruden the Washington Redskins quarterback and head coach uh, RG3 said after their loss last weekend, uh, guys got to play better around me. I, I need some help around me. And everybody knows that. Peyton Manning says that, and he's right. You know, I mean, that, that's a fact of football. But Jay Gruden didn't really like that Robert Griffin III said that because Robert Griffin III wasn't playing very well. It's obnoxious when those types of things are played out in front of the media and public like that. Go have a conversation with yourselves about it. Don't worry about involving the rest of us. Jay Gruden stood up at the mic and was asked about Griffin's comments, and he unloaded on Griffin. I mean, he said, well, Robert didn't do this, and Robert didn't do this, and on a three-step drop, he took five, and on a one-step drop, he took three, and he didn't read the right half of the field one time. I mean, he went on and on. It was, it was really obnoxious, like a couple of kids on the playground bickering over the Tonka truck they want to play with. This, these guys are grown men with jobs. 
and I Both love it. I love it when that stuff happens because yeah. it's just so fun to watch obnoxious, obnoxious people it doing was. it. Yeah, that's that's fair. It was entertaining, but definitely obnoxious. Yeah, fair enough. All right, well, that's all the time we got for KU Sports Extra this week. Tom Keegan, Matt Tate, somebody get this man a coat. We'll talk to you guys next week. <laughs>